In this video, we're going to be looking at a damped oscillating system. And we don't know what that means just yet. We're going to be investigating this. Um, a damped oscillating system is modelled by the differential equation d2x by dt squared plus k dx by dt plus 9x equals 0, where k is a constant. When t equals 0, x equals 0, and dx by dt is equal to 1. Essentially, it looks like simple harmonic motion with an extra term. Okay, this k dx by dt. And we're going to investigate what that does. So we're going to look at three situations. k equals 10, 4, and 6. And from that, um, we are going to get our particular solutions... And then we're going to want to look at what these graphs look like, what those solutions look like, okay? And see if we can figure out what that extra term is doing. Because we know that without that extra term, we have simple harmonic motion, and we have motion that should just look like a sine curve, okay? Albeit stretched vertically, horizontally, and translated horizontally, okay? So let's look at k equals 10 first. So the auxiliary equation would be m squared plus 10m plus 9 equals 0. Okay, so this can be solved. Uh, let's factorise that. So that'd be m uh, plus 9, m plus 1. So m equals minus 9 or m equals minus 1. So our general solution would be y is equal to c1 e to the minus 9, oh sorry, x equals, I should say, x equals c1 e to the minus 9t plus c2 e to the minus t. Just a bit of habit, doing y equals, of course. Okay, so that's my general solution. So then I need to substitute in my um, initial conditions. So when t is 0, I know that x is 0. So... 0 is equal to, we're going to get C1 plus C2. So that means that C1 is equal to minus C2. Now dx by dt would be equal to, so differentiating this, minus 9C1 e to the minus 9t. Uh, take away C2 e to the minus t. Now, I know that this is going to equal 1 when t is 0, so minus 9c1, take away c2. I know that c1 is equal to minus c2, so 1 is equal to 9c2, take away c2. So that means that 8c2 has got to be equal to 1, so c2 would have to be 1 8th. And so C1 is going to have to be equal to minus 1 8th. So in this case, we have um, X equals C1, which is the minus 1 8th, E to the minus 9T, plus 1 8th, E to the minus T. Okay, and so that will be my particular solution if k is equal to 10. Right, let's take a look at the situation when k is equal to 4. So my auxiliary equation would be m squared plus 4m plus 9 is equal to 0. Okay, so let's put that into the quadratic solver. So 1, 4, and 9. And we get m is equal to minus 2 plus or minus root 5i. So the general solution would be y is equal to e to the, sorry, x equals, I've done it again, <laughs> x equals e to the minus 2t cosine, sorry, c1, c1 times cosine of root 5t 
plus C2 sine of root 5t. Okay. So then, when t equals 0, x equals 0, so 0 equals, that's just going to be 1. Cosine of 0 is 1, so I get C1 is uh, 0. And C2 times sine of 0 is just going to be 0. So that means that C1 is 0. Then, um, if we've got that, I now know that x is equal to e to the minus 2t um, times C2. So C2 sine of root 5t. OK. So I need to differentiate this, dx by dt. So I'm going to have to use the product rule. So first times the derivative of the second. So we'll have root 5 c2 e to the minus 2t cosine of root 5t plus the second times the derivative of the first. So take away 2 c2 e to the minus 2t sine of root 5t. Now I know that dx by dt is 1 when t is 0. So when t is 0, that term's gone. So this term here, cosine of 0 is 1. e to the 0 is 1. So I get root 5 times c2. So c2 is going to have to be 1 over root 5, which is the same as root 5 over 5, multiplying top and bottom by root 5. OK, so in this case, right, let's just identify that with that one. I'm going to have to go to the next line, aren't I? x is equal to e to the minus 2t times by, now the c1 was 0. Oh, that's zero, wasn't it? And the C2 was root 5 over 5. So I can have that as root 5 over 5 e to the minus 2t sine of root 5t. And that is my particular solution for B. OK. All right, let's look at k equals 6. So the auxiliary equation for k is equal to 6 would be m squared plus 6m plus 9 is equal to 0. So this is a perfect square, m plus 3 squared equals 0. So m is equal to minus 3. So the general solution would be y is equal to c1 plus c2x. I've done it again. <laughs> the third time around. Oh dear, just so used to it. Uh, x equals c1 plus c2t e to the minus 3t. <sighs> right, so we've got that. Apologies, again. Um, right, so we've got that answer. Right, then we've got t is 0 when x is 0. So 0 equals t is 0, t is 0. So we just get c1 so that's 0 is equal to c1. We've got that bit. We also need dx by dt. Now, to do that, I need to use the product rule. So we've got the first times... The, now, we know c1 is 0. Maybe it'd be easier if I just write it like that first. So x is equal to uh, c2 t e to the minus 3t. So dx by dt... We've got the first times the derivative of the second, so minus 3, c2, t, e to the minus 3t, plus the second times the derivative of the first, so plus c2, e to the minus 3t. We know that dx by dt is equal to 1 when t is equal to 0, so when t is 0, that knocks out that. e to the 0 is 1, so we just get 1 is equal to c2. So we've now got the two constant values. So x 
is equal to C1, which is 0, C2 is 1, so we get 1 lot of T times E to the minus 3T. And that's my particular solution in that situation. Okay, so we've now got our three particular solutions. So let's now consider what these look like. If you've got a graphical calculator, then of course you can just substitute and put these straight in, okay, and see what they look like. I'm going to use, um, I'm going to do this without a graphical calculator, I'm just going to use what we've got, okay, to see what these should look like. Now, let's take a look at this first one. So this is t, and this is x. Now you know that when t is 0, x is 0. So it must start here. You also know that when t is 0, dx by dt is 1. So the gradient of the curve has got to be 1 at this point. So we're coming in at that gradient. As t gets larger and larger and larger, e to the minus 9t and e to the minus t will do both Sorry, both tend to zero. So both of them will tend towards that t-axis. So the curve's got to do something like that. Okay, so it's got to tend towards the t-axis. And it's got to come around like that because it's got to end up approaching the t-axis. There has to be a stationary point there somewhere, okay, in order for that to facilitate that. So this is what we have for um, k is equal to 10. Right. What about this one? Now, this one, of course, looks a little bit more complicated. Now, the first thing I'd like you to consider is inside this function we've got this root 5 over 5 sine of root 5t. Okay? I, it has exactly the same setup here. It's got to go through x is 0, t is 0. And it's got to have this gradient of 1 at the start. All three of these situations have to because they were the uh, initial conditions. Now, inside this function, as I said, is this periodic function or well, this periodic, periodic part of it. Root 5 over 5, sine of root 5 over t. So it'll have some periodicity to it, OK? It'll look like it's oscillating. However, the e to the minus 2t, what that's doing is that as t increases, e to the minus 2t is getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. So the x values are getting smaller as t increases. If that term wasn't there and it was just 1, then this would be a perfectly nice sine curve. But the e to the minus 2t, what that does is it shrinks the values of x and funnels it. So essentially, you've got this curve. It's kind of like this. So this is kind of like your e to the minus 2t curve. I haven't drawn that particularly well. I'll try that again. Which is tending towards 0. I'll try that again on this side. And your sine curve is trapped within it. like so. I mean, I haven't drawn that particularly well because the, the period shouldn't change as it's coming in. So um, let me just try that one more time. Apologies. Should be some kind of uh, routine to it still. It shouldn't kind of like squash as we go on. So I will try my best. <sighs> I 
<laughs> Some, somewhat looks even worse. Um, I don't know quite how I manage that. But um, you'll see it kind of like if, if you do graph it, um, you, you can get it much nicer than mine. Oh dear, oh dear. Not very good. Not very good indeed. Okay. But it looks like that. So it'll look like the sine curve, but it's trapped in this funneling nature because of the e to the minus 2t. Right, let's take a look at this one. t e to the minus 3t. So again, it's got to be going through t is 0, x is 0. It's got to have that initial gradient of 1. Now, t e to the minus 3t, as t increases, the e to the minus 3t part will go towards 0. Um, of course, you've got this t, which is getting larger as well. OK, so although t is getting larger, e to the minus 3t gets smaller faster. OK, so what happens is that it's going to look something like this curve here. It's still got to do that, but it's going to tend towards um, the t-axis again. And of course, if you're interested in finding out where those points are, then you can. Um, you can use differentiation to get there. So we refer to this situation as over damping or heavy damping. And is a result of k being 10 because of down to the discriminant of your auxiliary equation being positive. If you've got this situation here, then we refer to that as under damping or light damping, depending on the textbook you look at. And uh, check your specification to see what they're look what they're uh, looking for. And then you've got this one here, which is referred to as critical damping. Essentially, this one is on the knife edge, okay, of the two situations. So, this is when your discriminant is positive. This so this is when your discriminant is positive. This is when your discriminant is negative. This is when your discriminant is equal to zero. Okay, you get these three different situations. Now, how you should consider these, I will summarize um, more clearly in the next video.